The Crown is probably one of the most controversial shows ever because they're outright criticizing a monarchy that still exists. So it's easy to see why so many people have an issue with the show. But recently, the Queen's friend also spoke out against the show. In this video, we're going to take a look at what she had to say. So let's get right into it. First up, Queen's close friend says the Crown makes her so angry. We all knew that the Crown wasn't exactly true to real life events. After all, it is a TV show and they need that extra drama. But recently, one of the Queen's close friends has gone off on the show. Anne Tennant criticized the Crown, claiming it is disrespectful to the royal family. Tennant, formerly known as Lady Glen Connor, was actually a bridesmaid at the Queen's Queen's 1947 wedding to Prince Philip and also worked as Princess Margaret's lady-in-waiting. This was a non-salaried position that was only granted to aristocratic women who handled tasks as a personal assistant would. Lady Glen Connor claimed on BBC Radio 4's Woman's Hour that many parts of the crown are completely untrue, including an episode where Prince Philip is blamed for his sister Cecile boarding the trip that led to her death in 1937. Glen Connor says that she doesn't watch the show anymore because it just makes her way too angry. What upsets her the most is how most people just believe it without looking into the facts at all. She went on to say that Helena Bonham Carter, who played Princess Margaret in the third and fourth seasons, actually asked her for some advice before taking on the role. She even taught her how Margaret used to smoke and walk. But later on, when Helena asked how she did, Glenn Connor straight up said she was, well, rather disappointed. But Helena told her there wasn't much she could do about the script since it was handed to her. She's the actress after after all, and has to do what's written for her. Up next, she isn't the first friend of Queen Elizabeth to speak out. Another close friend of the late Queen Elizabeth also spoke out against the crown. The show has been extremely criticized by monarchy supporters and people that are close to the royal family. Judy Dench recently sent an open letter to the Times UK demanding that a disclaimer be inserted at the opening of the Netflix series to make it clear to viewers that the show is a work of fiction. The season 5 trailer now includes a warning stating that the series is a fictional dramatization influenced by real-life events. Although the show's creator, Peter Morgan, has said multiple times that his series was never meant to be totally historically accurate, the Queen's anonymous friend didn't specify what part of the show she didn't like, but she said it would have crushed Queen Elizabeth. According to her, it seems like the Netflix show is trying to destroy and vilify the royal family. Coming up, let's address the big question, did Diana really sneak into the movies? Diana goes to watch Apollo 13 with Hasnat Khan in Season 5, Episode 7 of The Crown. She was disguised and wore sunglasses with a short brown wig while snacking on some popcorn as if it was a regular day. Now, we might never know if Hasnat and Princess Diana went to watch the movie together. The Princess of Wales did attend the movie's London premiere, where she met director Ron Howard and actor Tom Hanks. In real life, Princess Diana would regularly sneak outside of her Kensington Palace home while disguised with wigs and sunglasses. And, as Vanity Fair's Sarah Ellison mentioned, Hasnat and Princess Diana spent as much of their time together in Kensington Palace, where they could easily escape the paparazzi and their cameras. When they went out, it was usually in Hasnat's Chelsea neighborhood, and Diana wore a dark wig and sunglasses. Stuart Pierce, a royal writer and Princess Diana's close friend, has also revealed that the princess would disguise herself and slip out of Kensington Palace to meet him at the movies. Pierce recalls the princess wearing a black trench coat, a long blonde wig, and sunglasses. Apparently, no one noticed that it was Princess Diana in that disguise. Well, we'll probably never know if Princess Diana ever slipped into a movie theater with Hasnat Khan. It's not a far-fetched scenario. Moving on, how accurate is The Crown Season 5 compared to real life? Despite constant praise over its four seasons, The Crown has come under fire for its lack of historical authenticity, particularly in the United Kingdom. Even though the creator has specified multiple times that the show was never meant to be accurate. But now, they put a warning at the beginning of the trailer that the show is just inspired by real-life events. With that in mind, we're going to look at how accurate the show really is compared to the actual events. First up, how did Queen Elizabeth actually become the Queen? The Crown Season 1, Episode 2, Hyde Park Corner, portrays Queen Elizabeth II's ascension to the throne correctly. Her father, King George VI, died on February 6, 1952, when Princess Elizabeth and her husband were on a common 
Commonwealth tour in Kenya, just like was shown in the series. The episode was even named after the secret codename used to inform the authorities of King George VI's death. Next, did something actually happen between Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend? In The Crown, Princess Margaret is essentially offered the choice of remaining in the royal family or marrying the divorced Peter Townsend. That way, she would be dismissed from royal responsibilities. While this is mostly true in actual life, it was revealed in 2004 that Sir Anthony Eden had created a plan that would have let her marry Peter Townsend, but any child would be removed from the line of succession. Although it's unclear why Princess Margaret decided not to marry Townsend, it's true that she chose the royal family and her position over him. Not to mention, was Edward VIII a Nazi sympathizer? In reality, Edward, Duke of Windsor, really was a Nazi sympathizer and an outspoken anti-Semite. Season 2 of The Crown properly recounts the release of the Marburg Files, which revealed that the Duke of Windsor plotted with the Nazis to force Britain to surrender during World War II. The Nazis also had a whole plan, Operation Willie, to restore the Duke of Windsor as king in exchange for the freedom of movement across Europe, but Edward's support for the plan is unclear. In real life, Edward was said to have been sympathetic to the Nazi cause and vocally anti-Semitic even after the war, blaming the beginning of the war on then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt and the Jewish people. Coming up, did Prince Philip have issues with the coronation? During the arrangements for Queen Elizabeth II's coronation, the crown shows the Duke of Edinburgh as struggling with royal customs and being submissive to his wife. Although it's true that the Duke of Edinburgh insisted on their children using the surname Mountbatten and that the coronation was aired, Philip definitely didn't refuse to kneel before his wife like it was depicted in the show. Philip, being a member of two royal families, would have never even thought of breaching the royal protocol like that in real life. While the Duke of Edinburgh had legitimate worries over Queen Elizabeth II's coronation, they were very exaggerated and dramatized for the crown. Moving on, did King Charles III actually hate his school? Just like the crown, King Charles III despised attending his father's Alma school, Gordonstown High School in Scotland. He also compared it to a notorious Nazi prisoner of war camp, referring it to Kolditz in kilts. At one point, he went against his father's wishes by sending his own boys, Prince William and Harry, to Eton College. That's basically rather than Gordonstown, which was like right next to Windsor Castle. Next, what really happened to King Philip's sister? The Duke of Windsor wasn't the only royal with a real-life tie to the Nazi party. Princess Cecilia of Greece and Denmark, Prince Philip's older sister, literally joined the Nazi party in 1937. In the crown, she died in a plane crash a little while after giving birth on board. Unfortunately, as it was shown in the crown, every passenger, including the newborn infant, was killed when the plane crashed. The reason for the collision wasn't shown because the event is a dream sequence in the crown. In reality, fog formed as the plane approached the North Sea, and the pilot tried to land at a Belgian airport. During the landing, though, the plane collided with a factory chimney and fell through the top of the building. Finally, did Princess Diana have an eating disorder? Princess Diana, just like in Season 4 of The Crown, had an eating disorder. She struggled with bulimia, an eating disorder, and a lot of mental health issues. Princess Diana was honest about her bulimia issues, revealing her experiences with the eating disease in a 1995 BBC interview. Princess Diana's honesty about bulimia helped in breaking down a cultural taboo surrounding eating disorders. That's it for today's video. Do you think the Queen's friend's anger is justified? Make sure to let us know in the comments below. As always, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.